Yo, what's up? Welcome back to Spread Quarters. Uh, hell yeah, bro. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. How we start? How do we start this? How do we start? I'm trying to think. How we start this off? Rest in peace to OJ Simpson. That's that was at the very least. If you say anything, at the very least, you could definitely say you weren't expecting that. You weren't expecting... Because OJ is one of them motherfuckers. You would have thought he lived to 100. Everything he done lived? Everything he done... I mean, you would have definitely thought OJ was going to live to 100. And um, just out of nowhere, OJ's... The juice is no longer loose. Um, I will say this, man. I think that this country is lacking... Um, we don't have enough slow car police chases. We don't see enough, you know. And OJ's was the most iconic, and you know, I just think that it's anything I wanted to say. I wanted to say that I don't think that we have enough slow car police chases going on in this world. It's almost like that that shit's peaceful, huh? You know what I'm saying? All that chaotic shit we got going, all that chaotic crime in the world. But, you know, the old, the good old school, slow car police chase. Um, you know, when I think about what this country, like things that make me think of America, the slow car police chase. I haven't seen one of them in a long time. Anyway, um, haven't been on here in two weeks. Sorry about that. Um, lots been going on, bro. Watching WrestleMania last Sunday. Um, what else I had going on? I mean, for the the college basketball tournament, betting my nuts off. Um, just a lot, a lot going on. But uh, happy to be back. We got a lot upcoming. The Saints are about to be on the board. The NFL drafts about to happen. Uh, UFC three hundred is this weekend. UFC three hundred. Um, shout out to the people in the chat. Uh, little leg day. What's up, little leg day? What a what a name. Little leg day. Little leg day. That's a, that's a, that's a, that's an interesting one. Uh, what up, Anthony? Oh, we'll never find his wife's killer. OJ will never find his wife. A lot of OJ jokes going around on the internet today. A lot of OJ. Oh, the ten k race. Yeah, I had that. I had the six. I ran six point two miles. So that was you know she had a lot of shit going on. Uh, WrestleMania was fucking nuts, bro. WrestleMania was one of the best WrestleManias in a long, long time, followed up by a really shitty Raw. So I just, you know, I never know what to think about WWE anymore, bro. I want to I wanna be sucked in, but they go and kick me in the ass. Every time they suck me in, they just kick me right in the fucking ass. So it's hard to watch that shit. Consider- I try. And then French Quarter Fest is coming up this weekend. Yeah, dude. And I'm going to tell you, bro, the thing about New Orleans, bro, when, like, the Saints aren't playing, they'll kind of let the, they'll get that time going by because there's a festival every weekend. Festival every weekend. Hogs for the cause last weekend. I was out till 2 a.m. at a barbecue festival. You know what I'm saying? 2 a.m. at a barbecue festival, bro. Bitches popping their ass and shit. Buy some pulled pork. That's the type of shit you're dealing with down here, bro. French Quarter Fest. And I think next is the Zurich Classic. You know. Next thing you know it, Jazz Fest is here. Uh, In the middle of that, they got all kinds of fucking other festivals. Strawberry Festival. Crawfish Festival. You know, we got a festival for every shingle on your roof. Down here, dude. And then next thing you know it, then you get festivaled out, and then the Saints start playing. So, and they get you real pissed off for the next year of festivals, which there's festivals going on. It's just festivals, bro. Um, Undertaker had to come to save the day, yeah. You love to see Undertaker uh, at WrestleMania. Hey, real quick, this show is presented by Rob's AC and Heaton. It's about to be Hurricane. I don't know if y'all heard the news. It's going to be a wicked hurricane season. Go grab a generator. When you go get one, get it from Rob's. Robsad.com, or you can call them 504-348-7120. Um, 
28. Let Rob know that I told you you need a generator. Sprite quarters. Hey, Devin. How you doing tonight? Yo, what's up? Doing good, man. Happy to be back and, um, you know, just enjoying all these festivals we got. Yeah, um, I currently live in Washington, D.C. right now, and they got some, you know, they got a lot of stuff going on here, but nothing like the festivals in New Orleans. But I tell you, one thing they I do see a lot on TV here is the coaches and everything talking about the commanders and the, and the Ravens. But I haven't heard anything or seen anything from the Saints organization about player status with injuries or it's true. anything like that, which is crazy. And, and the thing is, is it's like kids. When you got kids in the room and you hear them, everything's cool. But when they're quiet, it's like, what the fuck is going on over there? And that's kind of how I feel about the Saints right now. Like, what is going on? We've heard nothing from this organization. I'm telling you, the last thing I really heard about the Saints was that Chase, Chase Young was going to get that neck surgery. And honestly, I wouldn't be able to tell you if he woke up yet because I don't know. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, they had that that uh, eclipse last week. I hope that Derek Carr looked at that bitch without glasses on and it fucking put his brain back in whack. Oh, you think that's how that would work? I don't well, I don't know. Maybe he looked at it the last one and it threw him out of whack. So if you looked at it this one, it'll throw him back in whack. I tell you what, if there's one, if there's one thing I think Derek Carr would play a good role in as far as a movie, I never thought of Derek Carr being a movie. I think that dude could be a good X Man. You know, a shitty one. Well, if he plays the X Man character like football, it definitely would be a shitty one. That's what I'm saying. Just one that like has a power that like I don't know. It can, like, look at grass and it gets shorter. Just a really weak power. So so who do you think that they're going to take in a draft? Every mock draft that I've been seeing is still staying offensive line, which is a need, but I don't know. I mean, they got a lot of needs. Well, here's my thing. Whatever you get, it's got to blow me away, bro. And I, I don't care what anybody says, bro. Like, even if it's an offensive lineman, when they run the highlight, you know how they run the highlight tape after a team drafts somebody and they show that stuff from college and stuff like that? This dude, he better be running motherfuckers over if he's an offensive line. I, w- I want to see him making pancakes and sausage on the highlights after the Saints draft him. Got to know him. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's got to be somebody that they freaking out about when the Saints draft him. Now, if it's a guy when the Saints draft him, they start talking about the injury history. They start showing the dude in a leg brace and shit like that. Then I'm going to be pissed. Well, uh, with with this crew that we have, I wouldn't be surprised if that's what they do. They they get the offensive lineman that's missing like two toes and he's on crutches. That's what I'm saying. Like, find me the right offensive lineman. Like, and, and here's the deal: I'm still not sold on the on the whole not drafting Brock Bowers thing. If he's there, if he's there, the Saints got to draft him. They got to draft him. Yeah, but. You- I don't think he's going to be there because every everything that I've been seeing, he's going to go way before the Saints have. But I agree, if he's there, especially with the departure of Michael Thomas, they definitely need a slot type receiver or tight end that can go across the middle if Derek Carr can get him the ball. I just don't think that that, that Bowers is going to be there by the time they get, uh, it's their turn to draft. See, and, and that's my whole thing, bro. You want to give Derek Carr everything he needs to not have an excuse. And I know that's in, that's damn near impossible because he'll find an excuse out of his asshole. But you want to just make sure that you surround him to where there's no excuses, bro. Because if Derek Carr doesn't play good this year, when we surround him with the right shit, um, you know, then see him later. Well, I mean, 10 years and he hasn't proved himself or been surrounded by the right stuff yet. I mean, I just don't think – I just don't think – uh there, there's any right thing for this guy to be honest with you. Well, get him a tight end. The only thing we ever know Derek Carr did good was he got the ball to a tight end, Darren Waller. You know, so let's just do that. Well, well, one thing the Saints have to consider too is is that it's great to give Derek Carr the tools that he needs, but what does Nathan Peterman need? Because you know we're going to see him at some point. Yeah, it, that's true. I hate to even talk. I don't want to talk about Nathan Peterman on my show, but I. I hate the fact that you're so right on the fact that, dude, backup quarterbacks, you're going to see them. They're going to play. Derek, especially with Derek Carr. You know he's going to go out at least a, a quarter a game. 
I agree. Well, I took up enough of your time. Thanks for the chat, uh, Devin. Glad to have you back, and uh, have a good week. All right, you too, bro. Who that? All right. Bye-bye. Um, show's also presented by Ounce of Hope. I'm drinking that peach buzz right now, the peach buzz THC seltzer. Uh, you can get it, ounceofhope.com. Or if you don't like peach, peaches freak you out. Get the berry high, uh, the purple berry high. That's a great That's a great alternative. It's actually my favorite one. I just got the peach. Peach is nice. I love me a berry high. THC seltzer, ounceofhope.com. Drink a THC seltzer and fucking just, just relax, dude. Spread quarters. Yeah, what's up? Brayden from New Iberia, baby. How's it going? Yo, shout out New Iberia. It's going, bro. Hey, man. Crescent City Classic. Where you was at? I was running, boy. What you mean? I ain't even see you, cuz. I didn't even see you. What yeah. was your time? Uh, okay. It was an hour 28. You know, just slow pacing. Uh, Just, you know, I run once a year, dude. It's for the Crescent City Classic. I don't run at all the rest of the year. Hey, I feel that though for real. What did you hey, do? Hey, mile one, all them, all them boys are trying to hand, handle hand out them beers, bro. I, I, I had to run through that. Well, I tell you what, them what beers will fuck you up too, cause you're dying. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you're exhausted, and then they just throw you a little little beer and an orange, and my body just don't even know what to do with it. It just takes it. Go goes into straight shock. You start catching them socks. Yeah, yeah, no, but you tell you what, one thing I say about the Crescent City Classic. Bro, I feel so fucking good after I do that shit, bro. I literally feel like I met God. It's crazy, bro. I feel so good. Hey, that's how it be. And it's good for the city, too. The community really comes together for that. Yeah, but, but, hey, I, I I want you to know I was waiting to see you. I ran with my with, with that motherfucker shirt, and uh, I met a guy, mile five. He said, look at this motherfucker. I thought he, I thought he knew me. I forgot I was wearing a shirt. I was so fucking tired. Yeah, and I was like, "Oh yeah, the shirt, damn." Yeah, no, I, pre- I appreciate that, man. We need, you know, and I'm about to, I'm about to uh, get some more look at this motherfucker's shirts. I'm, dude, I'm always gonna use that design. I fucking love how that plate looks, bro. Every time I look at it, still, it's just, it's money, bro. Hey, I get people all around New Iberia asking me what it's about. I tell them, "All <laughs> being all day, baby, Monday." Yes, hey, sir. but one more thing before I go, my old lady, she she volunteered. She was working the red beans and rice booth. Now I know that's not you, you know. No, no free ads. I know that's not your your, your people, but hey, bro, I was waiting. <laughs> oh, oh, oh! You saying like at the thing after the thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the you know, no free ads. I'm not gonna say it. Oh, but, it's all know. good. I mean, yeah, no, I was uh, I went to that for about two hours. You know what I'm saying? And uh, man, we 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 had some shit over there that was I don't even know who brought it, but I it, that shit wasn't good. You know what I'm saying? It wasn't your old oh. ladies. It couldn't have been because that, that the food I had under my tent. I don't know what the fuck that was, bro. It was like jambalaya light. You ever seen jambalaya light before? Like diet jambalaya? Yeah, I got the jambalaya, dude. It was trash. Bro, that was the worst jambalaya I've ever eaten in my life. Yeah. Everyone was saying the red beans was good. I thought they were all right. My old lady, you know, her arms are tired, left to right, you know, for the bowl. Yeah. She she had her own race, you know what I mean? She was just as tired, rubbed her shoulder out at home. Yeah, dude, it's it's a it's a brutal race, but you feel good after. That's the best thing I can say. Yes, right. Next year we link up, babe. All right, right, bro. Take care of yourself. All right, later. Hey, give me a call, man. Come on, uh, let's hit the hotline, man. Let's 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 get some conversations in. Uh, OJ Simpson's dead. If you're just waking up, seventy six years old. Seventy six years. You give me seventy six years. Hey, bro. Give me seventy six. That's the one thing, bro. That's why I love Black Mirror, that show on Netflix, because they had that one episode where, like, you could, like, I don't know, like, you could see when you were going to die and shit. I think it was, like, you could see when your relationship was going to end. Man, you think we'll ever get to that shit? To where you just fucking know what's going on when you're going to die? Spread quarters. What's up, man? Hey, I was, I was listening to uh, Theo Vaughn's podcast. He had your boy, uh, James Winston, on there a couple weeks back. Hey, are you in the, and, bath- uh, are you in the bathroom right now? Because it sounds a little staticky or something. I'm, hold on, let me try this. Oh, go ahead, take your time. How about this? Yeah, it's way better. Okay, yeah, I'm in this empty-ass house at this point. But anyway, he was talking about, uh, James Winston was talking about, I didn't know this, but the NFL referees, that's like a part-time job. Like Some of them guys are like lawyers and stuff like that. They got other stuff that they do. 
throughout the year. And that just blew my mind. I just didn't yeah. know if you knew that. Well, how much does an NFL referee make? Like, what is it like? A few thousand a game? I don't know. Like, no, it all it all depends if the Saints are playing the Rams. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, that's funny. They never have really like publicly put out referees' salaries. You know why? Because it varies. Right. It, it varies. But I mean. <laughs> Yeah, you'd have to watch the clips on it. It's probably, you know, something on, on Theo Vaughn's page or something. But, like, some of them are lawyers. One guy's, like, in the aerospace or something like that. But, uh, you know, uh, Winston, James Winston knew a lot about all the refs. Damn. Okay, yeah, no, I didn't. I know which episode you're talking about on Theo Vaughn's podcast, but I haven't got to watch it yet. That one and Poirier. Yeah. You just did one with Poirier, too. Yeah, yeah, I listened to the Poirier one. It was pretty, it was pretty, uh, it's pretty good, man. They, I know they're real tight people, so. Yeah, it's dude, just Dustin's such you know. a nice guy, bro. It's just no, you met him before? No, I've never met him. I'm just talk- dude. I mean, I watch UFC every single Saturday, you know. So I, I'll watch all their press conferences, media days, you know, all that shit. And dude, Dustin is just a really nice guy, bro. Yeah, and I think uh, like during Thanksgiving, like him and Theo Vaughn get together and give out turkeys and stuff like that. Yeah, and he does the uh, and, uh, and Lafayette, yeah, he, yeah, he's got a great, hey, hey, Dustin Poirier has got a tremendous charity too. Uh, the Good Fight um charity, and he does really well. He's just a good dude. He's a good dude. Yeah, I bought his hot sauce too, and it's pretty good too. I never tried the hot sauce yet. I want to though. Yeah, it's, it's pretty inexpensive. It's on Amazon. So okay. okay. But yeah, just yeah, look into that. And maybe put that in some notes, and you know, let your peeps know that man. It seems awfully interesting that you 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 know you only you only work seventeen weeks out the year, and you do something else the rest of it as a ref. Yeah, I wonder what like the worst job is that ref does like. You know I'm saying like a bus driver or something. I don't know. I mean, like some of these people are lawyers. Like, how are you gonna how are you gonna be a referee in the NFL and you're a lawyer too? Like, it's you don't a make lot of, money. You're consuming a lot of information too. Right, right, right. I wonder what how kind of inside information they get too. Right. You know. So yeah, that's crazy. Just, just to pick your brain a little bit. All right, dude. All right, I'll talk to you later. All right, bro. Take care. Again, O.J. Simpson, he's dead. 76 years old, O.J. Simpson. I said, you know, I think we should have more slow call police chases. That's, I think that's more traditional. Um, Saints are drafting in a couple weeks. Hold on to your ass cheeks. Uh, the Pelicans are fighting and clawing um, to not be in the play-in right now, which the last time we were on here, we were not thinking that way. So wow, have the t- tables turned. Spread quarters. Hey, Devin, how you doing? Yo, what's up? I'm doing good. I just want to appreciate, Devin. My, uh, I was deployed this past football season, so my dad was sending me all your videos. We we're overseas. So oh. I appreciate the, the hype. So I yeah. like it. Thank I'm you. not going to waste your time on yeah. the draft because you know we're going to draft some offensive linemen that was carrying groceries at Rouse's last week. <laughs> so my question to you is, with Derek Carr, at this point, you know, everybody hates him and we're all sick of him. But we paid him so much money. At what point do we start cheering for him? Well, I think that'll be in week one. So that's what's going to happen, right? Isn't that that's the beautiful that's- thing about football? Um, I don't care how much you fucking hate a guy. When it comes to that new fresh start, and we done did everything the organization can do to be ready for that new fresh start. I think if you are not rooting for the team by that week one, if you have not put everything in the back of the garage by week one, then I don't think you a real fan because you got to have that feeling come week one. Hey, bro, we going undefeated, you know, or we're going to, you know, you just got to feel good about the team. Right. Or why do you even watch? So, um, right, and it's, it's, it's about time too. we, you know, since Drew Brees retired, we haven't been to the playoffs. You know, a blind squirrel finds a nut every once in a while. So I think it's about time this year. Well, and the good thing is Baker Baker's got paid down in Tampa. So he's fat and sassy. The Falcons are now, you know, the NFC the runner. The Falcons are going to be Kirk a problem. Cousins. Exactly. You think the Falcons are? No, yeah, I do. I think Kirk – I mean, dude, Kirk – come on, bro. Hey, we only in yeah. April right now, so I'm still kind of recovering from last season. It's kind of almost all out my system, but, you know, I'm just going to call it how it is. Kirk Cousins, Derek Carr, it's Kirk Cousins that's the better quarterback. Uh, yeah, I, that is true. One last thing, because I only keep your time. I know you do your Red Beans reviews on Mondays, but I think you should come out to Zurich Classic and do a review on Saturday. 
I, I always go to the Zurich Classic, so I always go, and I will not be doing a, a Red Beans because the only time I ever mess with Red Beans is on Mondays, and every other day I live my life. That's just the facts. I appreciate it. Yeah, I understand. All right, my brother. Well, thanks, man. Thanks for your time. Who that? All right, who that, man? Um, yeah, dude, I'll definitely be at the Zerg at least one of the days, and I always go. Um, you know, I like going. Like last year, I followed John Daly. Um, so you know, I was having a good time, bro, commentating the golf while I was filming it and stuff. You know, like saying what I had to say while I was filming. Like I was a little golf commentator. You know, how the golf commentators be they be, you know, low. Um, hey, do me a favor, man. I'm looking over here. Like, we gotta like the fucking stream, bro, so we can get this bitch out there to where people know, like HTM Live, bro. HTM Live. You know, the, the 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 clips that I've shared from this very show, this very show that we as recent as a few weeks ago, thousands and thousands and thousands of views. But we gotta get motherfuckers in here. I'm talking this show right here's got millions of views on clips. We got to get this show in here. We got to get people in this show, bro. Or just call me. You ain't got to watch. Call me. Spread quarters. I can't believe I got on. Oh. 20 times a charm. Let's go, baby. I love the the, the, the determination in April, my boy. <laughs> no, I heard you talking about the old, you know, OJ dying and uh, people calling in from uh, where their experience. I'm a little bit older than you. But I remember the, the day that it came out where he was found guilty for, I guess the, the weather was bad. We were inside the gymnasium and the teacher came out and we all chatted. She goes, hey guys, I got the verdict from the trial. It was dead silent. And she goes, not guilty. And you hear the, the gymnasium just, you know, explodes whether, you know, people are happy or not happy. But that, that's why, I, you know, I remember that when it came out. And also being glued to my TV the whole summer during the trial as, as a kid. Dude, it's fascinating, bro. And it's one of them things. What was it in ninety four? Was it? Was it? In- I couldn't tell you the exact year, but you know, in the nineties. But yeah, I was twelve. So I was just, see, and that and that's, yeah. and you was you were young. You know what I'm saying? And I was super young. Yeah, so yeah, I, it was I, the I, biggest I, thing, dude. It, yeah, was no social media. You know, there was like all of a sudden, like court TV is a big thing, and you know. Everybody was glued to it. I mean, you think people are talking about Trump. <laughs> but it's crazy okay, how but... the whole world, it didn't matter what your age was. Like, you said you were 12, and you said the whole school freaked out. That means a bunch of 12, 13, 11-year-olds who really ain't even grown yet, right? Uh, they Everybody yeah, yeah. was invested in the O.J. Simpson trial. It was the biggest TV trial ever. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody was glued to it. Dude, it's yeah, crazy. it was one of the biggest things. Yeah, and and uh, guy, is, is the dad still alive? I, I could. I if, uh, what's the girl's name that was murdered? Uh, um, Nicole. Um, yeah. What's the what's the what's the what's the guy's name? Um, I can't remember the dad's name, but yeah, uh, he did all the civil lawsuits. I, I'm just, I, I I don't know if he's still alive or not, but yeah, definitely. I saw that on the show. Yeah, he's married so to said, well, Kim Kardashian. That, that's my two huh? cents. His name was Rob, huh? Something like that. Well, the, well, you talking about the Kardashians? Kardashians was no, that was, was OJ's friend, huh? Yeah, they were friends. He was an attorney, but the the best was uh, Johnny Cochran. Oh yeah, that, I love Johnny, Johnny Cochran. Cochran. People from Shreveport, Louisiana, grew Shreveport, up in let's go, Louisiana. Yeah. yeah, but you talk to any attorney that from that area that was the, the best. Johnny Cochran defended motherfuckers who were, like, a lot of motherfuckers who were dead-ass guilty, like, if you would have just looked at the case and got him off. Right. Best attorney of all time. Right. Well, also, I mean, look at the, the famous phrase or whatever, if the glove don't fit, got to quit. Right. Uh, it's things like that. Yeah, he was he was one of a kind. Yeah, for sure. He was one of the best attorneys. And, yeah, yeah. That's a huge uh, history in America. Yeah, but the uh, like imagine getting a call. Ma- imagine getting a call from Michael Jackson. Uh, you know, after the, all the stuff done came out about him touching little kids, right? And Johnny Cochran <laughs> gets a call from Michael Jackson. I mean, can you imagine what Johnny Cochran's thinking in his head? Like, how am I gonna get this I'll dude get out of this? 
Well, a guy as smart as he was, he, he wouldn't say, how am I going to defend? Is well, how long can I suck this guy dry? He has no more money left. I'm trying to, to defend him. <laughs> yeah, man. Johnny Cochran, legend. All right, dude. Legend. All right, bro. Later. This show is also presented by Blue Plate Mayo. Hey, Blue Plate's not just making fantastic local fucking mayo. Stop buying tourist mayo by Blue Plate. But Blue Plate's also making shit like this right here, the hot and spicy mayonnaise. You know, if you got a crawfish boil going on uh, and you want to, you know, put a little of that on your craw, whatever you're into, whatever you want to use it for. It's a hot and spicy mayo. Blue Plate's evolving. Check them out when you're at the grocery store. Pick up Blue Plate. Don't pick up tourist mayo. It's all... That's all I'm saying. Sprite quarters. What you, wa- what you watching? Uh, uh, the Disney? Who's that? What's Me? up? Yeah, and I heard some type of jingle or something. Oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, no. I'm, yeah, like my son's got the TV on in the, in the living room. Desmond, but how you doing, bro? I'm doing good, man. What's happening? Uh, not much, man. I was just kind of seeing, like, I got into the stream late. Uh, a little bit late, but uh, now I was kind of curious, man. What, what you know? How would you? How do you feel about WrestleMania this past one here? Oh, we haven't talked like, about what was your highlights, low light. Yeah, we ain't talked about it yet, so I'm I'm happy to talk about it. Um, I I thought it was like I so I stayed home both nights, nobody in the house, just me watching WrestleMania every minute, right? And I thought yeah. it was awesome, bro. Like it really gave me hope, bro. It really um. You know, because I'm one of them wrestling fans where I've been watching since 96, bro. You know, I've been watching since I was four years old. And uh, I just, I'm so fascinated with that time of my life, you know, from 96 to 2004. And it just means so much to me, bro, like that whole era of wrestling. So as I watched wrestling kind of go away from what they were doing back then and kind of evolve, as they should, whatever. And it's just been a lot of moments in that gap of time where I've been pissed at the product, bro, um, to where I've, it's been unwatchable. I tell this story all the time, bro, to where I have, I was around like 25 people uh, for a bachelor party, and I turned on WrestleMania a couple years ago. I think, I think this was last year, and it was unwatchable. Yeah. It was unwatchable. They couldn't watch. They they hated it. Um, so this year was refreshing, bro. I really like, I mean, if I had to pick a match out of all of them, um, I mean, I thought the tag match the first the the tag match the first night I thought that was awesome. Um, what else that first night though? But it was another match that first night. Um, in the beginning. Um, come on, you talking about the uh, the multi ladder, right? No, that was good. One, uh, give me give me some more matches from the first night, real quick. Just trying to refresh. Yeah, I gotta look it up because man, like I'm 32. <laughs> no, yeah, I smoke a lot of weed, so you can't do this. To, but, no, 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 hold on. I'm trying to think. Oh, yo, oh, oh, yeah, yeah. The t- the tag ladder match was tight because our truth. You know what I'm saying? Our truth with a wrestle with a WrestleMania moment, bro. Stole the show. Look at that though, bro. Our truth yeah. is 52 years old, bro, and this dude is like peaking. He's peaking right now. Wait, but not only. But not only that, though, Devin, like that ladder match, like rewatch it, bro. And then, like, at one point, um, at one point, you see the refs really telling Priest, Damian Priest, like, Priest, the ladder is broke. You got to get another one. And then him and Miz are just still climbing that motherfucker. Yeah, I love the cash in moment from Damian Priest. I love that. I thought it was perfect. I yeah, love that, that fucking that was... Drew McIntyre over. Like, he's the perfect character for them to do that. To see him punk. McIntyre feud is fire. Like it's gonna go. It's gonna go a long way. They'll have that feud for like a year. You know. Oh yeah, most definitely. And then Sami Zayn, dude. Sami Zayn. Sami Zayn getting his come up in, and in, in his story against Gunther. Yeah, that was cool. That was great. And I love the walkout with Sami Zayn. I've always loved Sami Zayn. And then you know, Sami Zayn on WrestleMania is gonna put on a show, bro. He's a he's a showman oh, on WrestleMania. Absolutely, like. I mean, like, how you said, too, like, you've been a fan since 96, and, like, same same for me. Like, I got into wrestling, like, wrestling, like, the Monday Night Wars were, like, big back then, bro. Like, of course, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. Like, I, WWF, I, I, WWF, WCW, battling the 83 weeks and whatnot. But, no, yeah, like, Sami Zayn on the independent, 
Like when people like, I remember half of like Twitter was going off talking about like, oh, Sammy botched that uh that that turnbuckle move. I'm like, nah, bro, that's a brain buster. Yeah, brain buster. What Come a on. move. And then also like his feud Hell with yeah. Kevin Owens in NXT, legendary. Um, you know what I'm saying? That, mm-hmm. like, that's when re- wrestling really kind of got me back to where I was watching. You know, again every week. But um, overall, bro, I give WrestleMania this past one like an A minus, bro. That shit was fire. Yeah, yeah. Honestly, like I think, I'm, like to me personally, the only low light really was. I hate to be like this, but to me personally, Jay, it was just uh, Jay, the the Uso match. Yeah, me, it was it horrible. Was slow. Horrible. Yeah, it was slow. It was slow as shit, and Brother. it just didn't make sense to the point that like it should have had more. But I don't know. Yeah, yes, and I mean, here's another thing. Jay Uso ain't it. I know they let him win the number one contender match. He ain't it. That yeet shit is whack, nah. son. That yeet shit is yes. whack, whack, and it's covering yes. up his mid. Microphone abilities. That's why he only says yeet all the time. I'm fucking over it, Brian. His, and all he does is super kick. I'm over it. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, it's so played out now. And, like, hopefully with, uh, with what is it? Uh, like, allegedly, like, his, uh, what is that? I think their cousin. Uh, excuse me. His cousin, like, Jacob Fatu is coming in. Yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. Yeah, I heard about yeah, that. Yeah, but, I mean, that, that, that yeah, he's going to go off if it's actually true that he's fine. But, you know, we won't know, of course, until, you know, the rabbit's out the hat. But, yeah, man. It was, it was a great it was good, though. I would say, yeah, about A minus as well. Yeah, it was a great show. I mean, I got a few WrestleManias definitely ahead of that, probably like seven, but it was an awesome one. It really was. Yeah. Oh, yeah. All right, brother. Take care, man. I appreciate you calling. That was a good talk. All right, Devin. Stay up, bro. Appreciate you. All right. Later, man. Later. Give me a call, 504-265-0025. We talking about everything. Um, I got a cold, bro. I'm stuffed up. Um. Obviously, that phone call was by WrestleMania because WrestleMania was a fucking awesome show. It was trending all over the internet. Number one, just blowing up the internet. The Rock was there. I mean, it was it was fucking fantastic. UFC 300 um, on Saturday is going to be a spectacle. Um, that card from the very start to the very end is it, it's going to just good. You got to get around people and have a good time and watch that shit, bro. Spread quarters. Yeah, Rob. Oh uh, yeah, what's up? Rest in peace to Orenthal James Simpson, found not fucking guilty. You know, I, I never seen him play, but a lot of people on fucking Facebook and shit are saying he had a fucking killer fucking career. Just don't fuck with his old lady. But poor, poor Ron had to find out the hard way. And, uh, Shout out to Stanley at the zoo. I mean, he, he should be fucking running all of it. He, he might should be running the fucking city. Yeah, we need more motherfuckers like Stanley out there. That's for sure. Stanley's good for the fucking earth, bro. How do you feel about the Saints about the draft? How would you feel if the Saints draft an offensive lineman that you never heard of? If the Saints drafted a fucking offensive lineman, I would probably assault Mickey Loomis if I seen him in public. That's how I feel about that. It's a little aggressive when he's just trying to take care of the quarterback, huh? No, no, we need that. We, we that's what we need. We need a fucking quarterback. We don't need no more linemen. We don't need no more fucking lineback. We we need a fucking quarterback. Why do you think Derek? Carr, why do you think Derek Carr hasn't come back to to New Orleans yet? He's been in Vegas. Remember, he did the because he because he thinks he's fucking. He, he thinks he's Joe Olstein. He he. He forgot he was a quarterback fucking 10 years ago. Mm. That's why he's in fucking Vegas. He's scared. He don't want to come here. That's why I train a campaign here. Ah, you might be on to something right there, huh? Fuck. If, if training camp was here, my ass would be out there fucking letting that motherfucker know how fucking garbage he is. They all scared. Allen, Loomis, Carr. They fucking soften and charm And I'm tired of it. Ozzie. Have a nice night. Can't have a, even just ask the guy, like, how's everything going? Jordy Thibodeau, hey, coming in from Folsom. And the F stands for fresh, baby. 
What's your thoughts on where Mike T's going to go? It's crazy. Mike Thomas ain't been signed yet. I'd say like a, a winner for, for the cheap is what's going to happen. Yeah, he's going to get signed for uh, on a winning team for the cheap. Probably like the Chiefs. Um, You know, that's what I'm thinking. Some, something like that. Uh, do forget, don't forget the 420 Fest next weekend, Rob Leo. See, 420. Dude, I'm telling you, brother, like the next two months, just nothing but fest festivals and shit to do in New Orleans. Um, so really looking forward to that because it lets the time go by and then we finally get into Saint season where we can see what's really going on. Yeah, shout out Whistle Monster. See Devin in the chat. Yeah, shout out Whistle Monster. If you haven't seen the Whistle Monster podcast, it's YB number 11. It's on YouTube. It's in a playlist on the YB podcast. It's also on Apple and Spotify. And it's a, it's, a good, it's a good watch. It's a good listen, but it's a good watch, too. It's a really good watch. Really fucking good watch. Hey, UFC 300 um, on Saturday. I just want to go on the record real quick and just give out a few... You know, fighters I think are gonna win. Just from the very start to the to the you know, uh, the first fight is uh, Davison Figueredo versus Cody No Love Garbrandt. It's a banger fight. That's a banger fight. Figueredo is gonna win. Uh, then it's Jim Miller versus Bobby Green. Banger fight. Jim Miller, UFC legend. He's fought at UFC 100, UFC 200. Here he is on UFC 300, Jim Miller versus Bobby Green. You'd think that Bobby, faster guy, might have the advantage. Give me Jim Miller. Give me Jim Miller for a plus 150 dog. Write it down. Jim Miller. Jim Miller's hard to beat. Jim Miller's hard to beat. Bobby Green, I've seen him get knocked out, submitted, all that shit. He's just kind of 50-50. Give me Jim Miller. I like Jim Miller in that. Spread course. What's up? Yo, what's up? Ain't nothing to it. Hey, uh, I need some help if you can. Yeah. yeah. What you know about uh what you know about up here in Shreveport? They got me working up here for two weeks and I cannot find a good place to eat. I actually I actually <laughs> they got do crawfish know. up here or what? Okay. okay. Um there's a place in Shreveport. It's called Herbie K's. If I were, hold on one second. Okay, yeah. Go to this fucking place. All right, I got the menu right here. All right, brother, you ready? I'm listening. All right, it's called Herbie K's Restaurant. That's in Shreveport. Let me tell you, bro. I went over there. It's a fucking fantasy. Tell the dude that runs the place. This is in Shreveport. This is how fucking far away it is from me, and I'm telling you, bro. Tell that motherfucker behind the bar. He knows me because we went in there, and we had a religious experience, bro. I about caught the Holy Ghost in this motherfucker, dude. Make sure. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. Make sure you get the fucking shrimp poppers. Um, he's going to know. What, they might not even be called that, but like he'll, he'll know what, what, what you're talking about. Um, and then the crab claws, but you dip them in like this green Shreveport Fucking greatness, greatness, bro, brother. Um, yeah. That, yeah, dude. Look, that menu longer than the Bible. Menu longer than the Bible, bro. So just go ahead and check down Herbie Case. I have no benefit in telling you this other than it was a fucking fantastic experience. There you go, right there. I and hear it, you. And look, it's been there well, since nineteen. 19- hey, look, we gotta get, we gotta, we gotta get Brock, man, Brock Bowers. We gotta get him. I'm tired of the offensive lineman. Disasters. Every year we get an offensive lineman that don't pan out. That's true. Yeah. Oh, what defensive oh, lineman? We need some. Yeah, we need some flash for draft day, man. Just tired of it. Be careful in Shreveport, bro. I saw a few hookers out there. Uh, yeah, you're right. The roads are horrible up here. They got potos so deep they got people swimming in it. Yeah, that's how bad the roads are up here. And the casinos All are right, blocked. Right, All right, who that later? The casinos are, I don't know, it's weird. They got a bunch of them, but they fucking suck. So. Um, live golf, exploring a tournament during Super Bowl in NOLA would be wild. Big money. Dude, let me tell you something about the Super Bowl weekend, 2025. 
in New Orleans. It is going to be, I'm I'm already calling it. It's going to be the greatest time of my life, and I ain't even talking about the football aspect of it. There's going to be so many fucking people down here, like big name people, notable people, connections I've made through the internet that I've never met, and Dude, it's going to be the biggest gold mine opportunity of my life and really New Orleans. I mean, dude, it's the best thing that's ever happened in New Orleans since probably the Saints won the Super Bowl. This, this Super Bowl this next year, whether the Saints are in it or not, it is going to be so big. But maybe it's just because I'm a grown-ass man now. I'm fucking 31 compared to when the last time I was here. You know, I was still, like, growing up and shit. Like, man... I look at that as a huge opportunity for anybody trying to do something down here, bro. Because so many people are coming down here, bro. They're going to want to know where to go, what to do, uh, all that shit, bro. I'm, it, it brings a smile to my face on what's about to happen. And I hope, I pray to God the Saints in there. Look, let me tell you, if the Saints get into the Super Bowl that is in New Orleans, this I know this is a crazy even thing to like even like vocalize if this ever if that ever happened and it happened this year god forbid they went it don't even don't even talk to me about that but if that happened brother i don't even need to live after what would be more better than that i don't need to travel nothing I don't need to do nothing after that because that is the greatest moment you could ever ask for. The feeling is a feeling we've never felt. Even though the Saints have won a Super Bowl, that type of feeling right there, Saints in the Super Bowl in New Orleans in 2025, the world done advanced like a motherfucker. You're going to see so much shit, man, at that Super Bowl coming up, bro. Man, look, do not let the Saints get... Hey, do me a favor, man. If you just got in the stream, bro, throw a like on the stream so we can get this thing out there, man. Just just drop the chat down, X the chat down, and hit the hit the thumbs up. Really help out the stream. Um, I didn't want to get too dreamy there with that Saint scenario, but, you know, I'll just be thinking about shit like that, bro. It's going to be a really big fucking time for the city, regardless. Um. Just curious, have you ever lived outside the parish? Beyond, I've lived in New Orleans for the last 10 years. I'm from the parish. So I lived in the parish until I was 13. Like, lived there until I was 13. Got hit by Katrina. We lost our house. I went to high school in Abita for four years because I was 13 when the hurricane hit. Then I went to Baton Rouge for college. Uh, and I've lived in New Orleans ever since I was done. With uh with college, I didn't get a degree or nothing. I just went to college, just went out there for a few years. And then I've been back in New Orleans ever since. I don't think I'll ever go, like, move back to the parish, but who knows, bro. If I ever get a lot of money and I want to build something nice, it would be in the parish. I would definitely buy a camp in Hopedale. Um, you know, a lot of my family's still down there, but I live in New Orleans, which is about, or, you know, about 15 minutes away. From St. Bernard Parish. And uh, I love it. I love it. WWE hard to watch now. They talk about bringing back AA era. And it's complete trash. Not imaginably exciting anymore. Jordy, look. That sentiment I 100% like agree with. And I understand where they, what they do. And they do it probably several times a year. They say, oh, well, it's a new era. This is changing. Or we, you know, we don't ever buy into that. Because it's just never going to be the same. So if you're only watching it to get that feeling from the late 90s, you're not going to get it. You might get it in, in little spurts. You might get it in little spurts. But the, 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 the 90s shit, that'll never happen again. People are way too soft. The internet alone destroyed that era the internet alone destroyed that era or it having a chance or anything like it to ever come back the internet and we love the internet there might be a lot of things you hate about the internet but it's definitely 
a lot of things you use on the internet. We do on the internet. Motherfucker, I want to go check some scores on ESP. That's the internet. The internet ruined everything when it comes to wrestling as far as that era. Because a motherfucker can't even drink a beer on TV without getting 100 motherfuckers on Twitter talking about, oh, wow, 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 and offended. That is, the, that is, it'll never happen again. I need to be clear on that. It'll never happen again. You will get spurts. You will get some other cool things that happen in wrestling. But it is a very hard watch because they constantly are thinking about how are we not going to piss people off? How can we make everybody happy? When you try to make everybody happy, your product is going to look like a, hey, I'm trying to make everybody happy product. And that's and look, that's no knock to WWE. It is what it is. I loved WrestleMania. I thought it was fucking awesome. I thought it was a great show. The next night, the Raw after Mania, dude, you would have thought it was going to be the best Monday Night Raw ever after that great WrestleMania. Dude, they went right back. Right back to midness. Right back to almost unwatchable. Just like that, dude. So you just can't buy into it. Um, if you want a product that will never change, that will always be authentic, and is definitely not trying to make everybody happy, just being itself, watch UFC. Follow Dana White. Look at da what Dana White's doing. Listen to his interviews. That dude don't give a fuck. Ah. Uh. And I'm not an AEW fan. I, I, I'm a wrestling fan. So I'll watch majority WWE, but I'll tune in to AEW. So, again, I find that most people who bring up the AEW, WWE thing, that's new age wrestling fans. Because wrestling fans from when I grew up, we don't give a fuck what the... we were, You got to realize, we were flipping the channels from WCW to WWF. We don't give up. We don't have no fucking brand wars and shit like that. We just watched it all. That's some new age shit. Oh, you must watch AEW. Probably so. I, I tuned into it uh, last night, but I don't watch it as much as WWE. That's just me being real with you. Uh, what do I think about the Tyson-Jake Paul match? Man, I think I hope it goes quick and... You know, I'd love to see Tyson knock him out, but that's probably not going to happen. But the main thing is not seeing Mike Tyson get knocked out. I will not stand for that. I'll turn the TV off. Um, Yeah, should I say social media? I know I said the internet, but you're right. Social media changed wrestling. So there is a fine line between that. Um. Hope there, Louisiana, Speckle Tribe, Redfish, Capital of the World. Yeah, bro. And you can go get them many ways. You can go get them with a reel, or you can get them with the bow. I I, I hit them reds with the, with the bow, too, bro. On that bow fishing at night, that shit's crazy, bro. Um, Yeah, no. Nah, bro. Hey, people on Twitter, you know how Twitter is. People just think they know it all, and they'll, they'll, they'll call me a mark on, about wrestling. And I'm just, like, thinking to myself, I'm like, bro. I ain't even got to respond because I know I've been watching wrestling longer than this dude. You know? OJ's dead. Yep, we opened up the show with that. The juice is officially loose into the next life. The next life. Fights I'm most excited about. Let's get back to that because I was talking about that. And if y'all want to call me, y'all can give me a call. 504-265-0025. But I left off on that Jim Miller, Bobby Green, and I do have Jim Miller in that. And I love my eyes with that. I love plus 150 for Jim Miller. That first fight with fake Figueredo and Garbrandt, I like Figueredo. Straight up. Garbrandt's confident, but I still like Figueredo in that. Um, Mariano Rodriguez versus Andrade. That's going to be a close fight. I like Andrade. I like Andrade in that um, at minus 135. That's a, a lot of these fights are really close in the odds, bro. Uh uh, here's another underdog I'm taking. Mokano versus Jalen Turner. Give me mo give me money, Mokano. Plus 195. I like I like the, the, the momentum he has right now. Um Jalen Turner is 
you know, he's he's a little scary, but uh, I, I like Money Mokano in that, bro. Uh, uh, plus 195. Uh, Yusuf Diego Lopez, I mean, I probably won't even bet this one, just to be honest with you. Love Kayla Harrison over Holly Holm. Um, dude, that could, that Calvin Cater and, and Aljamain Sterling fight, that's a trap fight, dude. Why in the world, bro, would Calvin Cater be a plus 136? I mean, that's close. Plus 136 against Aljamain? Something's trappy about that, dude. And all it's going to take is Aljamain to get this dude down to the ground. He's going to just, you know, he's going to put him in a leg lock, uh, a body lock, and, you know, most likely just hang on there and eventually submit him. But something about that fight is just looking trappy. As a motherfucker. So if I had to put my guess out there right now, bro, give me Aljamain, but it looks trappy. Uh, Yuri Prozashka uh, versus uh, Alexander Rakic. Uh, this is another trappy looking one because you would think Yuri, even though Yuri's had a a recent downfall, but you would think that Yuri would be the favorite, but somehow Rakic is. Who's been out forever? Had a long injury layoff. Is a minus one twenty favorite. So, but you know, I gotta go with my heart on these picks. And if I gotta pick all underdogs, I'll pick all underdogs. Give me Yeri, cause they ain't no fucking way, bro. Give me Yeri in that Yeri Prozashka. Um Cody Brundage versus Bo Nickel. Obviously, Bo Nickel, but Cody Brundage don't sleep. And brother, if you wanna do a plus eleven hundred throw. 20 bucks on it, that might be your guy, dude. And he could get mopped up real quick. Bo Nickel has the most, most first-round KOs, but Cody Brundage has got a lot of first-round KOs, finishes. So I'm just saying, bro, don't sleep on that dude. That dude's like a dude out of the West Bank. Go look up Cody Brundage, plus 1,100 underdog. Go look that dude up. I mean, he's probably going to get mopped, but I'm telling you, don't sleep on him. Don't sleep on him. Oliveira. Uh, versus uh, Tersaskin, or oh, what up? I can't say these fucking dudes' names. But anyway, I know about both of them. Oliveira's the underdog. Um, that's a tough fight to pick because Armand's really good. Armand's really good. That's a tough fight to pick. I like Armand. I hate to say it because the Bronx, you know he's going to put on, but I like Armand in that. I've been thinking about the Max Holloway Gaethje fight for a long time now, and I think I'm just at peace. I'm at peace with Holloway. I'm at peace with Holloway plus one forty two underdog. I'm at peace with Holloway. I think that he can. I think that he can strike the whole fight, keep his distance, and stay away from the big blow. Max Holloway's never really been KO'd, uh, so I li- I like Holloway, bro. Spread quarters. Well, what's up, Devin? Yo, what's happening? Ah, uh, shit, bro. Nothing much. Uh, man, I, I was asking about them uh, fights, bro. I know you was going through it. What you, uh, who you got on that Max Holloway, Justin Gaethje fight? I'm at peace with it, bro. I've been thinking about it for, you know, literally weeks. And I am just so at yeah. peace with Max Holloway. I'm at peace with it. I think he's going to win. Yeah. I think he's got the volume. That's what I'm saying. Oh, well, yep. yep. And yep. He, just like Dustin did the first time, I man, I don't know. I think he just got the volume on him. Dustin's got that chin, but it'll break sooner or later. And Max can keep his distance. That's what I like about it, too. I think Max can keep his distance. He's the longer fighter. Um, I like, I'm, I'm at peace with Max Holloway. A lot of my picks on this card are underdogs. Yeah, me too, bro. I'm I'm going with you on Jerry as well. I, I, Jerry's a fucking dog, man. Yeah, like why is Rackage favorite in, in that? Like, what is Rackage? I have doing? no clue. Yeah. I have nothing. Grab and hold. I I can't really tell you. Yeah, because he was injured, and I think he came back. And I mean, he's lost to uh, 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 Jan Wachowicz. Uh, he beat Santos, who's ain't even in the UFC no more. T.L. Santos, he was broke down and beat. And uh, then congratulations. Well, he was broke after that John fight. Yeah. So his last fight was a loss against Wahovich, where he got knocked out. I- I'm not understanding where this dude could be a favorite. 
Uh, it, it, the eyes be all fucking sideways, man. I really don't be understanding it either. Well, you put a few of them dogs together, but guess what, bro? You got you got like a plus fifteen hundred parlay, plus two thousand. This shit's crazy, bro. Oh, I'm about to be all over that shit. Yeah, yeah. All right, dude. But, but hey, man, I got one more question for you. What you got? Uh, so uh, I'm from home, and me and my old lady make the trip down to New Orleans all the time. We try to go go see the see by the places you be going to and shit. And uh, what what's your biggest recommendation for like a go sit down restaurant besides Luke? We've been to Luke. And Luke's busting. Um, man. <sighs> Problem is, I don't been to so many places. It's hard for me because so I don't many, have yeah, a favorite. Yeah. I don't have a. I don't have a favorite. I can genuinely say that I don't have a favorite because just a lot of places I go is so good, dude. Um, <laughs> I'm like trying to think in my head. When are y'all coming? Oh, we go all the time. We're from Homer. Oh, 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 oh. All right, we yeah, have to call me, there, like, hey, call, call me next show. I'll have an answer for you. I got you, bro. I got you. All, All right. right, man. You have a good night. All right, dude. Take care. Later. Do you keep up with the Masters? Yeah, I definitely watch it. I'm going to put some money on it. Um, well, started, technically started today, huh? So I guess I ain't putting money on it. But, yeah, no, I'll check it out. Like, I'd love to go. I'd love to go to that hole in Arizona. The waste management, would love to go. Would love to go. Would really love to go. Um, Got to get Doogie on the show. Can't get in touch with him. I don't know how to get in touch with that dude. Trust me, bro. But you know what? Doogie about to miss the op, and I'm about to get the other puppet on. They got another puppet. I'm about to get him on. So I don't care which one it is, but I love Doogie. That's the OG. Classic. Nostalgic. Still funny as a motherfucker. But, I mean, I've been trying to get this dude in touch with this dude for three years, dude. I don't know what the fuck's going on. So it is what it is. I'm about to, I'm about to move on to the other puppet, I guess. Sad, bro. Anyway. Whaley Zhang against Jan. I got Whaley Zhang straight up. Um, Perea versus Jamal Hill. I like Jamal Hill. I like Jamal Hill. I like Jamal Hill in that fight. So, um, I got new merch, man. Obviously, the one I'm wearing, and then I got some uh, some other respect your body shit that I threw into the shop. Uh, respect your body tees. And this is all like premium, like, you know, heather, tri blend, uh, tees. They feel really good. And then uh, I got some hats, you know, that I dropped too. I put two different styles of hats, respect your body hats. And then I'm putting some pocket shirts in the shop. Uh, some look at this motherfucker pocket shirts. Uh, www.htmsports.com slash merch. Uh, is where you can find that at. Tech Nine out of jail and UNLV doing interviews again. Juvenile too busy right now to interview. All right, I mean, yeah, I've never reached out to Juvenile, but I'm waiting on Popeye to get out of jail too. Popeye from the West Bank. A couple dudes I'm waiting on to get out of jail so I can get them on the podcast. <laughs> but um. Anyway, I think I think we good, man. We did an hour. Unless we got any more calls, I think we good. Do some open panel discussions. This would be the perfect show. I don't I don't even know what that means. You have to say another word. I don't even watch the news like that. I don't, what is an open panel again? That's what I try to do. I just open up the phone. I've been doing this show for f- four years. Were we in 2024? I've been doing this show since 2019. Where I just open up the phone line. It's the same show. It, it it really has. I mean, my following and shit has changed and shit just throughout the years. But so I get more calls than what I used to back then. But we still. I mean, 
I'm still doing the same method I've done since 2019. Open up this this same fucking phone. This old school, you know, same phone. Look at the bottom of this motherfucker. It's just from just slamming. Because, dude, I used to have to slam this phone on some people, bro. But, um, yeah, y'all, you know, people can call me by whatever. I don't care. The only thing I don't talk about or don't care, it's not that I don't, like, talk about it or anything like that. I just don't fucking care about it. Um, It's politics. I have no input on politics because it's so fucking dumb to me. But other than that, bro, talk about whatever, bro. So, oh, the Fallout TV show. I'm glad you brought that up, Pete. That's what I'm literally, as soon as I get off of this, I'm going straight into my living room to turn on the Fallout. Dude, if you played Fallout, two things. If you played Fallout the game, you're going to fucking love it. First episode right away, you're going to love it. And it's made by the same dude that made Westworld. So you already know the type of vibe that you're about to get. Um, it's like Christopher Nolan's brother or whatever. You already know the type of vibe you're gonna get. Uh, David Goggins, is that him? Yeah, David Goggins. Or am I getting the Goggins mixed up? Whatever. Walter David, the dude from fucking uh, the show with Danny McBride. You know what the fuck I'm to vice principals. He's playing a great role, bro. It's a great show. Even if you've never played Fallout, the game. You're going to love this show. The concept, this idea of this show, it's fucking great, bro. It's great, bro. Check that shit out, dude. I'm going to watch. I'm, I finished first two episodes. I'm going to watch the third one as soon as I get off of here. I never got in the House of the Dragon, Kappa. But I guess I could. Just never got into it. Fallout was an amazing game. Um... I love the show, but I mean, StreamYard, you can have more people. And I, don't, I mean, if people want to come watch me, bro, they come watch me on YouTube. That's the way I look at it. And it ain't, it ain't, there, there's nothing more to it to me than that. Like, StreamYard, like, I know about it. Hey, could I probably get it? Would it help me? Absolutely. All that stuff. I get it. But if people really want to be here, they'll come to the YouTube. Or they, I put it on Apple and Spotify. You know what I'm saying? They can go listen to it later. Um, I don't, you know, once you, cause you got to realize I do all this shit by myself, always have. Once I start fucking with too much and shit like that, it takes away me. I can't be me, you know? And all it takes is one internet connection start fucking up when I'm running several streams and shit like that, and then it, it just blows the whole show. I'm dealing with Cox, bro. Now, if I was on a, um, you know, bro, if I had more money, that, that shit wouldn't be an issue because I'd have a motherfucker doing the stream yard and all that shit, but it just is what it is. It's, it's part of always grow. I'm still growing. I still haven't even reached 50% of my potential, in my opinion. But yeah, no, I, I, I know what you're saying, and I just haven't gotten there yet with stream yard and all that shit. Um, Pals, tonight, playing the Kings. Pals got three games left, man. As of Thursday, April 11th, 2024, Pals got three games left. What's going to happen, man? Just trying to not be in the play-in. Last time we did a show, we were feeling great. Like we weren't going to have to even worry about being in the play-in. Now we kind of sitting at the sixth spot. You know, the sun's kind of starting to fuck up. Whatever. We got three games left, bro. Win two of the last three, and we good. Walton Goggins, my bad. I'm thinking of David Goggins. <sighs> And I think when B.I. gets back, it's going to be an adjustment. It just is what it is. Dudes don't just come back and, like, everything's gravy. So it kind of sucks how it all work, worked out in the end. But it's what we got to deal with. Um, I believe in Zion. You know, I, be, I believe, bro. Especially if we get a series. If we don't have to get that play-in shit and we get a series, let's fucking go, bro. Let's fucking go. And we on TNT tonight, baby. Let's go. Um. Anyway. Hey, uh, appreciate everybody that showed up. It's great talking to everybody. 
Thanks for everybody who called. Let's get some more calls next time. Um, but we had a, we had several calls tonight, and, and and I enjoyed talking to everybody. Um, and I'll be back Sunday. I'll be back Sunday night. I'll be back Sunday night. So again, thank you everybody who who joined tonight. Uh, do me a favor, throw a like on the stream before you leave. Um, and you know, see y'all on Sunday. I think it'll be a great fucking show. Y'all take care.